Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This video is from Mr. V. K. Mehta's book, Principles of Power System. And here we'll be discussing example 8.26, for which a student has requested from Bangladesh. Okay, the basic concept is that whenever there is a cable stressed, then at every unit length, the weight, uh, 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 omega weight per unit length uh, is available. And all these, or uh, some of the weight is centered at the center point, and which can be written as capital W is small w into x, where x is the distance, this distance x. Now, this is when it is purely horizontal. What will happen if it is not horizontal, if one pole is high? But if the slope is not very steep, then we can also assume the same thing. We can approximate that the way it is still lying in the middle of the rope. So for a small portion of hanging cable, we assume the net downward force due to weight still to be in the center. So we have to keep this point in mind. Now, one more thing, the difference in level between points of support and the lowest point of the conductor is called SAG. So what is SAG? Reading a difference in level between point of support. Now in this case, this is the point of support, A and B. We have two pillars. Similarly here, A and B, we have two pillars. The, the difference in level between the point of support, so let's take this, point of support is B, and the lowest point on the conductor. So this is the lowest point on the conductor. So this distance will be called SAG. Similarly, now in this case, the lowest point is less uh, uh, away from here, so it will be called S1, and it is more away from the point B, so it is, uh, the SAG will be S2. Now this is, as we said, it is weight of length x. If this is the length x we are assuming, then the weight will be w into x, small w. Now remember that this diagram is slightly exaggerated uh, for clarifying the point, but actually the sag is this type or even lower than this. So that point we have to keep in mind when we are discussing. Now he is assuming a point P, point P here, on the conductor. Now in, in, in our conductor that I have this with the small flag, this is point P. Now assuming that the curvature is so small that OP is equal to X. Now this OP distance is equal to X. In this case, uh, it looks slightly uh, difficult to understand because the curvature is more. But as I was told, telling you that this is just to uh, show you the, uh, the exaggerated view. Keep this point in mind that OP is almost equal to X. Now, there are two fourths. One is the tension force. If you pull the cable from two sides, obviously it will have tension. And then we have the weight of the cable. Now we are only considering this portion. Keep in mind. So this force uh, is the weight force. And although the drawing is not very uh, exact, but this is also x by 2 as this portion is x by 2. That means the weight is in the middle of O and P. Now just for your information, when there is a force, uh, and this is a point on which we have to, let's say, find the momentum of this force, then the force multiplied by the perpendicular distance we have to take into consideration. Similarly here, if this is the force tangent, this force 
then the perpendicular distance to point P is Y. So one of the force will be T into Y and the other force is omega X, uh, sorry, WX and WX is all the way if we extend this distance is the perpendicular distance or the shorter distance. So it will be uh, WX multiplied by X by 2. So let's see here. Equating the moment of ever two forces about point P. With the book it is written O, but I think it, is, it should be point P. So we are at this point. And here we are equating the two forces, the tension, moment of the tension and moment of the weight at this point. So Ty, as we mentioned, T and the perpendicular distance Y should be equal to Wx and the uh, shortest distance x by 2. Now from here we can write y to be wx square over 2t. Now if we keep on moving this point near b then what will happen that this y is, will be equal to s. So y will be equal to s. And so we can say or replace this y with s and this is sag, the S is sag. So the formula for sag is Wx square divided by 2t. So we'll use this formula. Now this was the case for support at equal level. So both the supports are at equal level. What will happen if the supports are at two different levels on a hilly area? This is one support and this is the other support and the level is different. In this case also we will be taking help of the same formula for SAG. But then we'll X1 or this SAG will be W and this distance X1. And similarly S2 will be uh, X2, this distance X2, W and x2 so these two are the formulas for the sags also this distance x1 and x2 is equal to the length and from here if you subtract these two we get this formula and we can uh, break it a square minus b square formula so x2 plus x1 and x2 minus x1. Now x2 plus x1 is L, so we'll replace that. So L here, and then what is remaining is x2 minus x1. But now, working on this, s2 minus s1 is h, the difference in level between the two supports. So this s2, minus s1 is h that means we can write s2 minus s1 we can write or uh, replace it by s the rest remains like this and from here we're just manipulating this is the uh, equation number two we we uh, getting we already had equation number one this one from here so we'll solve these two equations to find the distance x1 and x2. And if we find x1 and x2, then from this, we can find s1 and s2, the two sags. Okay, now with this background, let's now come to the question that we have to solve. A transmission line over a hill where the gradient is 1 over 20. So the gradient, this is the gradient. It is 1 over 20. That means if the horizontal line is 20 feet, then the vertical will be 1 feet. So that is gradient. It's supported by 22 meter high towers. So our tower is 22 meters. With a distance of 300 meters between them, that is between the two towers. So one tower is here and one tower is here. So the distance between them is 300 meter. Now the lowest conductor is fixed 2 meter below the top of the tower. So 
this is the top of the tower so two meter below is the lowest conductor connected and that means the uh, this distance now let's we will see the lowest point on the conductor is o and what we need to find is find the clearance of the conductor from ground so this is ground this is the conductor so we need to find og okay and what all is given is the conductor weight given and the tension given okay so we had these two formulas and as we said that if we can find x1 and x2 we can find s1 and s2 also if you look at this diagram og this og is actually hf hf this whole diagram minus this one and minus this one so minus s2 and minus gf and hf is actually bc so we can also write bc minus s2 minus gf is og okay now sequence of action we have this formula we have this formula and we have the formula for s2 and why we are only interested in s2 because we just saw that og has s2 not s1 so we s2 will find from here and then we need to find bc and also we need to find gf okay first of all effective height of each tower so 22 this is 22 minus 2 that means this height is 20 meter from ground then the vertical distance between towers is h now this is the distance between two towers one tower is here and one tower is here so the vertical distance is ec or h and now from here we know that the sine of this angle theta is perpendicular over hypotenuse this is hypotenuse ec that means ec divided by de and if the if the sag is less as we discussed earlier then we can approximate that de is equal to dc so we replace it here assuming that dc is approximately equal to de and the gradient is of course ec divided by dc which is 1 over 20 given in the question so from here two things ec can be written as de sin theta de sin theta de is 300 meters and sin theta from here is 1 over 20 so h this height h is 15 meters now we have found h therefore we can find this formula now we can write x s x1 and x2 equal to 300 of this distance is equal to this distance which we have approximated to be uh, 300 meters and then x2 minus x1 as we have found h from here 15 the rest all the other things are given tension is given 1500 kg omega uh, is 1 kg per m not omega rather w and x2 plus x1 is the length 300 meters h as i mentioned is 15 therefore x2 minus x1 is 150 okay so x2 x1 plus x2 we have found 300 meters and x2 minus x1 is 150 meters solving these two we find 2x to be 450 and x to be 225 meters so x we have found now we're x2 sorry so we we can calculate now uh, uh, 
uh, S2. However, let us also find X1. So 300 minus uh, X2 is X1, 75 meters. Now S2, the formula here, and putting the value of X2. So SAG2 is 16.87. So S2 we have found. Now, what we need to find from this question, to find OG, we need to find BC and GF. S2 we have already found. Now, BC, if you look from here, BC is BE plus EC, BE plus EC. BE, we have found the effective height to be 20 meters and 20 meters, so that is 20 meters. EC, which is equal to H, we calculated it to be 15. Therefore, BC is 35 meters. BC we have found. Now we need to find GF, this distance GF. Now GF, if you look carefully, this is the angle theta. GF will be, this distance is X1. This distance is X1. And this is the vertical distance. So we can say that GF is X1 tangent of theta. I hope you know what is tangent of theta perpendicular divided by base. So perpendicular we are trying to find base is given so x1, so x1 tangent theta. Now how much is theta? So from here we, we had already done this part and theta is 1 over 20 is equal to 0 0.05. So for theta we take inverse of sine and the angle will be 2.86. So tangent of 2.8665 75 and tangent of 2.66 will be 0 0.05. So GF is 3.75 meter. So now we have found all the parameters. So OG is BC we have found 35, S2 we have found 16.87 and GF we found 3.75. So the clearance is 14.38 meter. I hope you have been able to follow this. Please let me know through your comments. Thank you.